My name is Chris. Um, I'm going to talk to you about unofficial. You might know me best about trolling everyone on cookies. For literally an entire month, it's going to keep going, I'm sorry, because we have to drop an NFT, and I'm here today. I uh, first started my consumer career with startups in Austin, Texas. I worked um, on products and distributed financial supply chain systems for a company called Skinny Pop. It was a small company of maybe like 10 or so of us, and we had like a thesis about how to interconnect all of these disparate systems. And uh, we sold the company um, to Hershey's for $1.3 billion, and I didn't want to work for Hershey's, and Spotify saw me, and I became the first American hire to um, their team for finance and uh, engineering within the Southern Org. We just formed it. And uh, they wanted to go through a direct listing, hadn't done it before, they wanted to experiment, and I think that that was the moment I realized, like, oh, I'm in trouble. I have no clue how to do any of this stuff. Um, we took a, a good bit of time to solve some of these major problems with infrastructure, and you know, the things were just brand new everywhere. Um, we launched podcasts. I did royalty data pipelines. I basically learned everything you could possibly learn. Um, and then after five years, I decided to quit. Um, I had a sabbatical, and um, a recruiter offered me an interview for a company called Farcaster. Back in the day, Farcaster, the client, was also Farcaster, the protocol, and no one knew what the difference was. And if you were to tell someone that, oh, the client is actually the protocol, but it's also a client, they just their mind would explode. And it's also decentralized. So back then, it was very different, and I'm glad they did the um, logo change and everything else. Um, I got a ch chance to read the product and protocol documents, um, and I was mesmerized. I took an offer at Peloton because my CFO at Spotify became CEO at um, the, his new company, and um, I was brought over to help rebuild the financial supply chain systems. It was like burning, walking into a burning, uh, running into a burning house, <laughs> but thankfully the company has survived, and uh, yeah, I, I uh, was able to, to scale the business a little bit um, and reset. Even still, while I was there, I could not stop thinking about Farcaster, about this, um, this protocol that um, solves an insane amount of problems, not only from a social angle, but from a data perspective. You get clear, organized, attributable data um, all through the layers of um, our ecosystem of engineering. And it also tracked the FAT protocols thesis that USV wrote in 2016. I had seen this um, from some of my conversations with colleagues at Spotify. And um, I, I, I basically understood the value of um, Firecaster because of that within a matter of like minutes, I guess. It just, it, it, was, it needed to happen. Um, protocols take a long time to show value, and this was the first signs of life that things would change in our ecosystem, right? Like, it, it takes a long time for, if you're, if you're a protocol engineer, you know it takes a long time for value to show up. And um, this was that first moment. Um, I also want to mention that Joel was writing this whole thing on the backdrop of the App Store and the decline of Facebook app marketplace, when you could play Farmville, you could play Mafia Wars and all these other things, and there's this um, the sucking sound of uh, attributable value from this open web into a centralized party of the App Store. Zynga had a, a bad private, privately public breakup with Facebook, and um, they had bought their way to a near monopoly power on top of <laughs> Facebook, and um, they were um, focused on softcore gamers. And um, as Joel was writing this, it was clear that blockchain offered the side door to engineers um, to recapture some of that market value and power. Um, this is the FAP protocol graphics that are in the, the, the website blog post. Um, and it's, the basic idea is that you have this amorphous, highly competitive applications layer, and uh, you have this very thin protocol layer. Um, there's a lot of applications that are built on this, this FAT protocol, uh, sorry, this FAT applications layer, um, and it, it goes all the way down to like one very, very thin protocol. It's, um, 
uh, akin to RSS feeds for, for podcasts, right? Or SMS messages uh, over, over your phone. And um, these protocols do not change. If they change, they explode the entire network and all the data becomes corrupted. Um, because of that, WhatsApp and iMessage have been able to pull all of the value out of the, this thin protocol layer and put it into an applications layer. The same thing was true for Spotify. We realized that um, podcasts were not going to innovate for the next 20 years, and there was an opportunity there. Um, and then um, Apple's monopoly over podcasts became nothing over the course of maybe five years or so. Uh, blockchain offers an alternative to these centralized entities because the protocol is freely available and the cost of data is a function of decentralized fees and everyone can pay that and get access to that. Um, the protocol gets larger and larger as more applications push value into the stack as often as we pull it out of it. So it's a virtuous cycle um, that just keeps going going. And the market cap of the protocol always grows faster than the combined, combined value of the applications built on top of that, no matter what you apply. So Another way of saying this is that the clients of the protocol will never be greater than the protocol value itself. It's just not possible. Um, and any, any breakout success of the application or client will always end up feeding into the protocol, um, and then others can benefit on that data. Um, and I, I think also to note here is that the protocol does not need a token for this. Farcaster does not have a token. I do not expect it to have a token. I think that there might be a hubs token to prevent some people from trying to fork the entire network, but on a client basis, it does not need a token. It will not, never need one. Um, so in the FAT protocol um, thesis, um, I think people assume that your protocol will have to be tokenized, and I don't think that that is, that is necessary. And I, I was waiting for that to happen. I've been hearing from VCs and hearing from folks that you always have to have a token with whatever you launch to monetize and blah, blah, blah. I didn't think that was true. Um, so for the last year or so, I've been tracking the growth of Farcaster. I started running a replicator um, and started pulling data out um, about this time last year from the hub. Again, low-key obsessed, and the interactive opportunities that you could have on the platform kept growing. I was watching engineers in our space send messages to the hubs and pull data out and do things with it. I thought that was uh, phenomenal. At zero cost, marginal cost of business, uh, that they were doing, Bountycaster, for example. Um, there was a whole bunch of other people making bots and smaller um, uh, things on the platform. If you were there, it was a fun time to see like things go haywire too. You could see like bots just like mass spamming and like no one cared. Um, and um, it didn't hurt also that the talent density of the platform was basically the same as my Twitter for you page. So I spent a lot of time just being there, just being in a place of community. Um, it was a small, dense group chat and not a lot of productivity, uh, productive, productive activity, as I said. Um, and I found that my data analysis for, um, for, for Farcasters to succeed, they needed to fix the retention problem. So they were getting good users, they were growing um, user, the user base, but people were not coming back. There was just no reason to. Twitter had network effects, and there was just more fun happening out there. Um, and, and the first thing to happen was they introduced warps, and then they introduced channels. And then things changed. They, they fixed this retention loop. And I started to notice that this was going to get worse over time. And I quit my job on January 1st to go full time into this, looking for a reason to build a business, um, looking for signs of life in the, the application layer, the, the thin application layer. Um, yep, and, and like I said, it would just keep going up and up and up. Um, Yep, um, they fixed the retention issues. I think people were there in December. Um, we have channels, people were playing around. They, there was points. I don't think points exist anymore in terms of the conversation. It's all degen. Um, I, I think there was also a lot of drama associated with points, um, if I remember correctly. Um, and it, it, I think it was the first time that people with a token could see each other. They could interact with each other and they could see the, 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 the value associated to each other in a way um, that you could not do on Twitter. Um, so, and they were using all three pieces of, pieces of this uh, low friction protocol. They were using this application layer, this off-chain protocol um, token optional layer, and then this on-chain protocol token required layer. Um, and all three of those were synergistic. 
Um, the, the, this, this protocol, by the way, is, was super thin in 2022. Um, it was getting bigger in 2023, and it will be incredibly large. It will be much larger to the scale of national conversations at some point in the near future. Um, and I can't begin to imagine what it's going to look like um, in having to deal with all that hub data that will have to be sharded out of the network. Like you, I think we were saying earlier, like you have to have eight gigabytes. It's actually 16. And on top of that, it's getting bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. And then eventually we're going to have to shard data everywhere. And that's going to be a problem to solve. Um, so I saw user retention improving. People were returning, um, but it was just gambling and token casino economics. Um, or token casino economics, casino economics, I'm not sure which one. And um, then frames happened. And then you could finally offer those experiences off platform, on platform, because of this HTTP um, um, trust um, re requirement actually having um, provable points of both from the client and also from the server. Um, and it was this missing piece of the composable social puzzle for me is like, how can you trust who people say they are on the internet? You need them to prove it. Wallets are way too much friction. I'm sorry if anyone works at a wallet company, you provide friction, right? <laughs> I'm sorry that that, that that is the case, but um, it, it is, it is extra, uh, abstractable and um, in time that will not be as necessary. And um, it, it's changing, it's, it's gonna happen. Um, and they also don't, con they don't contain trustworthy social graphs embedded in the wallet data. You have to ask people to follow you on these wallet apps and that's like not great, right? You should be able to just follow people. Um, and so forth, and also ENS is just not enough. You cannot do, um, you can't ask people to sign up for an ENS and then prove who they are and then also add them as a follower. It's just too much friction. Um, this is one of my favorite, favorite photos uh, or um, comics from The New Yorker in 1993. It's um, early days of the internet. They had no clue who everyone was. And so uh, it was drawn out like on the internet, nobody knows that you're a dog, right? Um, People love to pretend and fantasize about who they are not. Um, and it also lets them express themselves in ways they can't in the real world. Uh, Farcaster frames solve this. And it solves this trust principle by allowing people to say kind of who they are and also represent those things on an end-to-end -end value. And uh, you get to know exactly who you're following and who follows you. You cannot have that in Twitter today. Um, you have to beg people to follow you. Well, people actually beg um, Farcaster today about that as well. but. Yeah, there's auto follows and everything. So, this is also my dog. This is the dog tax. I'm sorry. Um, so, I wanted to work in this space and I, I needed to figure out how to do it. Um, I started with a thesis, and um, but the thesis was I want to do something better, more inclusive, simple, fun, and more importantly, solves a problem. I was, I was searching for this, I was thinking about like what to do. There's always, you know, everyone says, like, you know, do a news feed or, like, do, um, I don't know, do a new token gambling thing. And I just, I, that's not who I am. And so I, like, passed on a lot of those um, opportunities. And I, and I settled on commerce is easier on Web3. Um, I actually was getting into commerce um, quite a bit um, through working with commerce tools. Commerce tools is a, um, they call themselves composable commerce, and they're headless um, API. They actually have no client. They're Shopify without a total uh, interface. Um, and they, they do $30 billion in order volume. No one knows who they are. It's kind of crazy that this exists um, in the Web2 world, um, but it also powers some of the, the most well-known companies in the world. And um, so I was thinking of ways to like incorporate that um, because like the hardest part is knowing who your customer is, signing them up, getting the email, getting the password, doing all these things. Um, and uh, I stumbled upon, this is like super tiny, I'm sorry, but this is Coinbase Commerce Node. It's a node package um, that, that I had just stumbled upon trying to find ways to do commerce in the Web3 world. Um, Shane, that works at Farcaster, is the last person to commit to it four years ago. He also works at Farcaster now. Um, I thought that those, that was really kind of funny to see like the same people that were already building into the future of the web are also working on the things that are also building into the future of the web, and it's just, it was fun to see. Um, you could programmatically, so, so this was made um, during the pandemic. It was made as a way to invoice people. Oh, yeah, sorry, I took way too long. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, you can make, make things on the internet uh, faster by sending links. Um, you sell things on the internet faster by making links and sending it to people programmatically. Um, I had seen, as well, at the same time, someone send a Girl Scout cookies message in a Slack channel, 
And I had realized that I need to um, make this better. And so I allowed people to put um, a little bit of information at the bottom of the, oh, sorry, it allows you, to, frames allow you to put a little bit of information at the bottom of the open graph link that unfurls. And I instantly realized that, oh, you could start to do the checkout process and to build a cart. Um, and so to prove this point at the Variant Hackathon, me and my team decided to go full in on this and build everything. We built a Redis uh, cart, we built all the authentication schemes, we built the router, we built the um, order processing, we built the link. Um, we were the first group to introduce, uh, sorry, to implement redirects into the frame so that you didn't have to send a link anymore, you could just simply just send someone out to the link. Um, yeah, this was our tech stack. We used base, commerce tools, Versal, Farcaster, and then a very thin application because the FAT protocol is that data layer. It is insanely large, right? This is what the frame looked like. It's also super tiny, I'm sorry. Um, and then this is what the checkout experience looked like. It's also super tiny. Um, but we built all of this. We had to build all of this, right? We knew that if we did not do this, people would be upset and they'd be mad and they would not know what they were buying and also they would just churn out. So, um, yep. Bill Gates wrote this thing in 1996. He said, content is king. Um, I've lived that my entire consumer career. Um, he wrote this uh, right before he had basically purchased a deal with MSNBC to do all the interactive write experiences of that, that web experience. Um, it, because everything before that was read. You could only read news articles. You could only, whatever. Um, this is content. This is content everywhere. This is so much content, people get mad at me and say, I'm tired of cookie stuff, please do something else. All right? And then people can make content on top of that content. It is more interactive, it is multimodal, it is the future of the web. I know this because your company happens to do this as a derivative value of the multimodal interactive experience that, uh, that we offered. So my new thesis is that community is easier on Web3. Right? Why, why do I think that? I think that is the case because I can see the people and people can see each other in a way that they could not do before. I built this uh, thing, it's a playlist, but it's also a token curated registry. TCRs, people were talking about it four years ago, people try to do it and they always fail. I did it less than a week of just coding it. I wanted to prove a point. Point is that people can contribute and they can be seen and they can see each other. And there's a lot of stuff we can do with it too. I love these beautiful photos. Get to look at my friends when they submit um, their songs, right? This is uh, Kevin, him and I are close friends when he submitted this uh, song to the playlist. I was instantly playing it, right? This is a demo of that experience. Oh, wait, sorry. You can click through everything. All right, click, click, click. All right. Also, this was really fast one day, and then another day was not fast, so horse facts, you got some work to do to help me bust this cash. <laughs> it's giving Madonna Vogue, it's giving love. It's gonna autoplay, you can do everything automatically with inside of the application itself. I can listen to other people, I can see their playlist changes instantly as, as they change things. And I can submit a song, when I hit the submit button, it's a transaction. This one actually failed, I think, because I was trying to I was testing on base Apolia at the time. But you have to submit a token to be able to interact with it. Yep, that's it. This is the, we made this in Paris with my co-founder, Erica. It took us about two hours to make this. And then it took about a week to make the frame. I'm doing a Strava frame. I love running. I love seeing people run. I want to do it with them. I'm doing another one of those. And so what the business looks like is this. It is a very wide, amount of social and communal experiences over top of a very deep FAP data protocol and being able to touch every client on top of the Farcaster realm. I think it's great because it's doing something fun and engaging, not necessarily gambling. Um, Farcaster is talked about by Variant. Variant has been one of my closest uh, watched companies and they talk about this whole entire stack um, I met Jesse at Spotify five years ago, and uh, 
have been obsessed, like, like I said before, about um, this whole thesis. And so I'm trying to prove points and that you can do those things. I just have to find more of those points. Um, this is a little bit of our past, right? This is Farmville. It was spam, it was everywhere, and everyone hated it. It was, it was as this uh, review of Dark Patterns said, the game pressures users to invite friends, not because the game is fun, but because certain features and goals are useless or inaccessible without online friends also playing in what this paper describes as a social pyramid scheme. Yeah. So I'm going to leave you guys with a quote. We live in a world where there is more and more information and less and less meaning. I hope to change that. I want people to see the world and see each other and play with each other and experience each other. Go back to some first principles. Content is king. Continuous, continuously experiment, ship fast, move on very quickly. Like I said, ship the, the Spotify frame, I'm moving on to something else. I have people lined up to work with me. I'm very excited to show you guys when that's completed, possibly in two weeks or so. Um, we also have perfect products, perfect marketing, make beliefs, bet your company, build with the best engineers. Everything is optional, except Farcaster, it seems right now. And have fun with your friends. That is the only strategy that we have. Um, and then this is me and my co-founder in Paris, because we found people on Farcaster to meet. We did some uh, analytics. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>